Welcome back. My name's Steve and thank you for joining me on my photography journey today. Today we're going to talk about what's in this box and that is something that's quite interesting. So let's open it up. Wow. is the Nikon Z5. And what we're going to talk about today is what you do with it when you first take it out of the box, how you use it, how you get those first pictures, and some little hints and tips about how best to kind of get the most from your new purchase or your new Christmas present maybe. Let's get rid of that. So this is the camera. This is the Nikon Z5 and it's what I've been using for a couple of years now. It's my everyday camera. It does my videos. It does my photography. And it's what I've been using and what I really enjoy using. So obviously today I can't be filming with it. So I've got my iPhone. Um, I was wondering about how to film this because obviously I use this all the time. Uh, but I thought, well, I've got this in my pocket all the time. So let's try it out. Let's see what's going on here. So this is filmed on my iPhone and we will see how this turns out. So it might look a bit different to normal, but we'll see how things go in the editing. So when you first get your camera, you're going to need a battery. So in here, that's where the battery is. So I don't know whether it comes fully charged or not, but you, you can soon find out by putting it in and turning it on. This is a Nikon ENEL15C. Um, I did actually buy a second one of these and I will link to that in the description as usual. Um, that means that I've always got one that's fully charged and ready to go. So you may also notice that I've got a sticker on here um, and that is so that I can tell when the battery is in its case, whether it's fully charged or in need of a charge. So my case, again, just a cheap one that I bought on Amazon, room for two batteries in there and I put them in like this. So I've got a sticker on there so if the sticker's facing up I know that that battery is fully charged and ready to go if the sticker's facing down then I know that that is in need of a charge so I'm going to use the one that's fully charged today just pop that one into the bottom and it just kind of clicks into place close it up and then the battery is in and ready to go so that's step one and while we're talking about batteries um, like I said this one needs charging the charger that came with my camera, um, when you plug the battery into it, it will flash while it's charging and then go solid orange. A uh, little light on there will go solid orange when it's fully charged. So that's how you know when the charging's done. So I'll just pop that in there for now and we can sort that out a bit later. So now that our camera has got some charge to it, we can power it, we can take pictures, but we need somewhere to store them. So that's where the memory cards come in. In the side here, little slot that opens up there's room on the z5 for two sd cards um this is one of the cameras that takes two of exactly the same card not all nikon cameras do so this table is going to tell you a bit more about which cameras have which different card type but for this one like i said two sd cards i've got two that i bought on amazon they're 64 gig um read and write speeds up to 260 megabytes a second. It does for me, it works as I need it to. Um, again, link down below for, for these ones. Um, I've not had any problems with them. But the reason I've got two, I always like to shoot with a backup. So I'll have one in slot one, and all you do is just press it in, clicks into place, and then again, second one, just in and clicks into place and you'll see a little yellow light come on to say that it's registered and it's in there and then close up the door and you're ready to go so the fact that i've got two in there every picture that i take is saved to both slot number one and slot number two so that i've always got two copies of any pictures that i take and that is the same um, for any of the images i shoot raw 
as my file format and I save a raw copy to both of the SD cards. Having those two copies just means that if I lose a card, if it gets corrupted or anything like that, then I've always got that backup ready to use and I've never had a problem since. And then when I transfer it to my computer, which we'll go through later, that's when I have another copy and then save that to the cloud as well. So at some point I end up with four copies of the same picture, but that then means that I can delete some and it stops my cards getting too full. So talkie of which, let's turn this on. And um, what I'm going to do is in the side here, you've got some other slots. Um, I've got an HDMI output, so I'm going to connect that to a recorder so that we can see what's going on. So what that means is that I can show you exactly what's on the screen on here. So let's turn the camera on, which is just this button at the front, it just sl slides around to the side, and that's now on. So as you can see, this is the screen. This is what I can see on the camera. And in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see that we've got space for 1200 pictures. And that is based on the size of the SD cards that are in the camera, whether I'm shooting to one and then the other, or whether to both of them at the same time. And it's also um, the file format that I'm using. So I'm using the largest raw files and I still have plenty of room for plenty of pictures. So I've never once filled it up. Um, and then at the end of each day, I kind of transfer it onto my laptop and then back it up. So I've always got plenty of room for pictures. Um, as you can see, I'm shooting in FX mode and large raw files. Nice and straightforward, really. Right, let's get into the, a bit more information. So let's look at something else. So the other thing that you need, SD card, power, you need a lens. So let's look at that now. This one has got my 24 to 50 mil f4 to 6.3. This is the lens that came in the kit with the camera. Whether you've got the most expensive Z lens or the cheapest Z lens, the way that you connect them is exactly the same. So on the front of the camera, you have this button that you press down. You rotate the lens clockwise until these two white dots line up and then you can pull your lens away. Now, when it's like this, everything's open. You could get dirt, dust, uh, water, anything like that in, and your lens and your camera aren't protected. So keep them apart as little as possible. So to put a new lens on, whichever lens it is, again, line up those two white dots. You don't need to press the button this time. And then this time you turn it anti-clockwise so that that white dot comes up to the top, up underneath the Nikon sign, and it kind of clicks into place. So that's now secure on there. And again, to undo, just press the button and twist. Nice and straightforward. So like I said, make sure that you're not getting any dirt or dust in there. So try and do it indoors if you can, out of the wind if you can, um, just to prolong the life of your camera and your lens. You don't want it to have to be cleaning them um, all the time. So you've got your lens, you've got your power, you've got somewhere to store them. How do you carry this? So it's easy enough to carry it in your hand um, this one is not particularly heavy, but once you've got a bigger lens on, once you've got a bracket or something like that, which we'll come on to in a bit, they can get quite heavy. So a strap is a good idea. It's not vital. It won't change your pictures particularly, but safety first, you've just been given this gift or bought it yourself and you don't want to damage it. So pop a strap on it, keep it safe. And then that way it will last you for years to come. Now the strap that came with my camera, it had bits that just looped through these metal triangles and they kind of secured against itself. So it wasn't quick release. You, it was kind of either on or off and it was a bit of a pain to take between the two. So what you can see here is these are from a company called Peak Design and these are quick release uh, toggles, basically. They're slightly annoying in that they rattle around a lot, but at the same time, they make using a strap so much easier. For me, carrying with a strap isn't something I particularly enjoy doing because it's always kind of in the way. I would rather carry my camera like this, but I know that sometimes that's not practical. You need two hands. You, you need to just kind of get your camera out of the way, but still have it with you. So that is where this comes in handy. And I have a strap from Peak Design as well which has the opposite part of the quick release. So all you do is you clip in your strap like so. 
and then it's nice and secure. It, it's attached, it's ready to go. And what I tend to do is wear it over my shoulder, over one shoulder like that, so it's easy enough to bring round. Obviously, this is a bit short today just because it's um, easier to, to demo with, but I would normally keep that nice and long so that it goes over one shoulder, so it's at my side rather than hanging down in the front. And again, to take it off, just press those toggles and it slides off nice and straightforward. And what's quite good is that the strap actually came with four of these. So two that go onto the camera and they just kind of loop on, um, twist around themselves. So they just loop through like this. And that makes them nice and secure, but it came with two sets of them. So I've actually got a set on my camera bag as well so that I can use a strap on that rather than just on the camera. But like I said, these do get in the way a little bit, particularly if you're maybe taking a, a portrait shot, it can hang down over the display. But I mean, I would much rather have that than, than a um, strap hanging down over them. The strap that I got is the Leash, I think it's called. Um, if I did it again, I would probably buy one of their thicker straps just because, I mean, this is essentially car seatbelt material. Um, so it's, it's certainly not going to break or anything like that. But it's just not as comfortable as I would want it to be. So I would spend the extra money to get a slightly wider one, uh, which will be on my um, Christmas list for next year. Now, the other thing that you can see on here is this plate on the bottom and this is my quick release tripod plate again this is from peak design and this one is made to go with their capture clip which is another way of carrying your camera which i'll talk about another time uh, but basically this is a standard size it's called an arca sized uh, tripod plate and it will fit in pretty much any tripod and that way it's easy to get your camera on and off rather than screwing the camera onto the tripod which obviously would be nice and stable. It's not the best way to actually easily get it on and off of the tripod. So let me just demonstrate that now. Here is the top of my tripod. Um, the rest of it is just here. And what I have on the top here is the other part of the quick release plate. And imagine this is on the top of my tripod and you just pop your camera in do up the screw at the back and then it's attached to your tripod. It's not going to go anywhere. So you've got your nice stable connection and then to undo it, you just again untwist and pull your camera off as simple as that. So what more could you want? Well, there is a slightly different version of this, not of the tripod head, but of the attachment to the camera. So let me show you that now. So the plate itself comes with an Allen key, which you can just unscrew it nice and straightforward and then this is an L bracket you can tell why it's called that uh, but basically this is a more adaptable version of this so let's just attach this one everything's got standard size fitting so even though this isn't a peak design L bracket the connection is the same the same allen key works for it so again just screw that on nice and secure and then you can see that it covers two sides of the camera. So it makes it heavier, it makes it bulkier. But the advantage comes when you want to take a portrait orientation picture. So I use this when I'm out shooting landscapes because that's when I don't want the camera to move, I don't want it to fall over. So I'll show you how that works next. So if you were taking a landscape, uh, sorry, if you were taking a portrait orientation picture with a normal tripod head, how would you do it? You'd have to release the plate down to the side and then so your tripod's here holding this up and then you would attach your camera to the side like that which means that the weight of your entire camera lens everything like that is to the side which if the tripod is supporting it down the middle here is going to make it less steady so it is more likely to fall over. Whereas with the L bracket, we can pop this back up to the top. On the top here, you've got a level to make sure that your tripod is level and stable. Now, because of the L bracket, I can now put it in this way around, which means that 
the weight of the camera, of the lens, is pushing straight down on the center of the tripod. So everything is a lot more stable. It's less likely to move in the wind or uh, anything like that. Less likely to fall over, damage your camera, move when you're trying to take your shot and things like that. So that's where the L bracket comes in. But like I said, it adds extra bulk to the weight of your camera. So it's not something that I have on there all the time. It's only when I'm going out with my tripod that I leave it on there. And again, it's just a quick Allen key to uh, remove it or screwdriver. There we go. So let's get those out of the way. So now we've got our camera all set up and we just got all the physical bits around it ready to go. So now we need to actually turn the camera on and take some pictures. Okay, so let's have a look at what's actually going on on the camera. So we've got the screen on the back so that I can see all of my settings and things like that. Plus, you've also got all of the buttons on there as well. So let's go through it. We, we've mentioned the on switch already, which is over here. That just twists to the side, either on or off. Nice and straightforward. And then on the back here, we've also got this dial here, which changes it between video mode and still mode. So if we're gonna take pictures to begin with, we want it to be in stills mode. Before we go into the menu, I just want to say, I'm not gonna go into it in lots of detail. If you want to see the detail on all the settings that I use or anything like that, have a look at these videos here, which I've talked about before, talked about my settings, setting up my camera and the different menu options and that can be quite useful but today I'm just going to talk about the very basics that you need to take your first picture. So when you first get your camera press the menu button which is on the back here and it will take you straight to the language selection and this is the first thing that you'll do is set the language for your camera so just press OK. Choose your language from the list and again just press OK. There we go. The next thing that you need to do is just set your time zone. So come down one, press OK to go into the menu item and then this is where you set your time zone. As you can see, I've already done mine, but it's it's where you do it. And if you're connecting it to your smartphone or tablet, you can have it automatically update, which is, again, what I do. And it's something that does come in really valuable. So again, just press menu and menu again to take us back to the beginning. Everything's set up now. We're ready to take a picture. So don't forget to take your lens cap off so that you can see your lens, you can see through uh, what's going on. And as you can see, some lenses will need to be extended before you can actually take a picture with them. So let's do that now. All you do is twist this front part of the lens, where again, it's like there's a dot lining up with a line, just twist it. And then towards the 24, which is there. And there we go. So that is now now open. And as you can see on the back of the camera, we're ready to shoot. Another thing to mention is that we're in auto mode. So that's the easiest one to get started with. The camera itself will control all of the settings so you don't have to worry about anything like that. But if you want to learn more about those and the different modes, again, I've got a video linked up here that will talk you through what these different modes are, what the different settings are and how to apply them to the pictures that you want to take. But for now, we'll just leave it like this. So I'm just going to take a picture of my desk. Um, you can see the red lines around the outside of the picture here. And that is the focus box. So whatever you want to take a picture of, make sure it's within that box. Then all you need to do is half press the shutter button. And you'll see these green boxes appear. And that means it's focused. Press the shutter the rest of the way down. And it will take the picture nice and straightforward. If you don't want to half press that, if that's awkward, you've also got this AF on button on the back of the camera. Press and hold that and again comes up with the green boxes. Keep your finger on there and then just press the shutter button once and again focus takes the picture. Nice and straightforward, isn't it? And the other thing, if you've got a zoom lens, that's what this front dial does. It changes it in this case from 24 to 50 mil and as you can see there this is the difference in the zoom between the two so again 24 let's take a picture and 50 let's take a picture and we can compare the difference between those two and when you finish taking your pictures bring your lens back in it just protects the lens a bit more 
and also it means that you won't accidentally press on the screen and take a picture because that's the other thing this touch screen on the back you can use to take your picture as well so there's a few different options for you there so now what i want you to do is take your camera go out and take some pictures uh, it doesn't matter what they're of but just go and enjoy using your camera that, that's the whole point of getting it um, you don't want to leave it sat in a box and not do anything with it go experiment with the different modes as i said i've got a playlist all about how to to use those so take a look at those or if not just use auto mode and nothing wrong with that at all the main thing is using your camera enjoying taking photos and just have fun with it that's all that matters and then once you've taken your pictures let's have a look at what we do to get them off of the camera get them onto a, a computer and then send them to someone that you want to see them and while you're out taking your pictures this button up at the top with a, an arrow in a square is to review the pictures that you've taken so you press that and it will take you to the most recent picture you can use the arrows on the dial here to go left and right or you can swipe on the screen and as you can see i've taken five pictures so we can go through those and see what they all look like and that's an easy way to to just have a look while you're taking them to see what's been going on and what your picture looks like and then to get back to taking pictures just press that button again and it takes you back to your normal shooting mode okay so what we're going to do now is transfer our images from our camera onto our computer and then look at some basic editing so what we want to do is get the sd card out now i've got a macbook so on here i I don't have an SD card slot, so I've got to have this adapter, which is plugged in uh, when I need it. SD card just goes into the side like this. And then what you'll see is it appear on your computer screen as a uh, drive itself. So let's open Apple Photos. Normally I would use Lightroom, but because I am aware that not everyone has something like that and if it's your first camera you you probably won't have anything like that so apple photos comes built in on apple devices and let's have a look in there so once that's loaded up you can see that drive appear on the side in here so let's click on that and you can see those five pictures that i've just taken so let's um select all of them you can either select which ones you, you want to import or choose import all new photos and then you can choose whether they go into an album or not so let's just put this as my new Nikon and then click create so it will create that album press import all new photos and they will come in just takes a moment to to import them and then there they are nice and straightforward so let's go into one of these and see what we can do with some editing let's take this one as an example so just double click it to open it up and as you can see we've got this part in focus at the bottom here and this bit a bit blurrier because that's where our focus was and that's what we wanted to take our picture of um, so let's see what we can do in terms of editing so we've got a couple of options you can either do things automatically or you can do them manually so the easiest way on Apple Photos is this magic one button. Press that and it will apply the auto settings to it. It will think about what's needed and then apply that to your picture. You may or may not like that. It's it's up to you. Again, photography, very subjective. So it, it is entirely your decision. So let's just click on edit so that we can do some things manually. Up at the top, you've got adjust, which is this where you've got all of your different options down the side you've got filters we've got preset ones like on instagram and things where you can choose a filter to apply to it and then how much you want that filter to apply let's go back to the original and also you've got crop so actually all this desk space at the bottom we don't particularly want to see that so let's just bring that in and then just focus on on our subject so let's just bring this in a bit there we go so it's just my roadcaster now there we go so once you're you're done with that just click done or you can choose a particular um size and then in edit this is back to the adjustments and this is where you can change all of your different 
exposures, how saturated or unsaturated your color is. So let's bring this down and we can see a black and white version of it. Uh, we'll leave it there where it, it's just very pale colors. So lots of different options on here. You can, well, I mean, there's so many different options, but I would just begin by clicking on the auto and seeing what that does. It's better than not editing it. And then from there, you can play, ar play around with your different options. So you can see where the auto has done it, come into here and then drag it one way or the other and see what it does, see what it changes. Just play around with it. Nothing is permanent. Everything can be undone. So at the bottom here, you've got reset adjustments and that goes back to exactly how it was when you started. So you don't have to worry about ruining your picture. You can just play around with it. And then once you've got it how you like it, so let's just do the auto for now. So then how to share it. You've got in your file menu, you can export it. So you can export this one photo. You've got the options of how to save that file type. So when it's in Apple Photos, it's a raw file. So you've got lots of adjustment options. But when you export it, you want to save it as a JPEG because it's much smaller and you can choose the quality of it if you want it to be bigger or smaller file choose what you want to call it and then just press export and it will save it like you can see these are ones that I've saved before and just press export it will save it on there and then you're free to email it text it to someone post it to Instagram anything like that so it is all nice and straightforward getting your picture taking your first picture saving it onto your camera transferring it onto your laptop and then sending it off to whoever you want to share it with and as i said i use lightroom um, i've got a video that's all about my workflow and how i use things so take a look back at that if you want to see the lightroom side of things but this was just a quick look at apple photos as that's the most popular most easily accessible application that i've got um, just to give a quick demonstration of how easy it is to take your pictures and share them with your friends. So I hope that was helpful for you today and that you learned something from this. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you again next week for more on my photography journey. So have a great week. Bye.